we define an RPA robot as a software program specifically designed to assume the role of a worker within an organization and specifically designed to um, assume roles that already exist in organizations that yes. humans have been previously carrying out. So those are yep. the parameters of the, the software program we define as a robot or an RPA bot. And, yep. and those are the programs that then take over interaction with existing legacy user interfaces. Yeah, not only legacy, but also, uh, well, yeah, you see them um, more commonly in legacy uh, uh, interfacing or uh, uh, applications or, um, but we tend, tend to use them on uh, basically web-based applications. So uh, everything you can you can run on in, in your browser, uh, we can perfectly uh, ro robotize. So we can perfectly make a robot on that kind of application. And I like and, that yeah, they're robotize. Exactly I'm going to use yeah. that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they they can they can basically do whatever uh, you uh, as a human can do as well, uh, including uh, uh, SharePoint, Mailbox, uh, uh, all kind of uh, uh, fancy uh, fancy stuff. While we're on the topic of defining what a robot does, the scope of its typical functionality, based on your experience with RPA projects so far. Um, are there sometimes things that robots cannot do that perhaps uh, stakeholders, clients expect them to do? You know, we understand the administrative interactions and the data entry, but are there some? Are there certain limitations that we also need to understand? Uh, yes, but it depends on what kind of robot you're using. Um, for example. Um, we have processes where uh, where people send our, uh, us uh, stuff, copies of uh, IDs, passports, uh, stuff like that. Um, if you want to uh, get data from those kind of uh, sources, um, a, a, a typical robot, uh, which I just described, it, it doesn't read uh, a PDF, um, which is made by a picture. Uh, so photo, photo uh, um, uh, uh, reading, then you need some other additions. It is possible, but it's much more difficult because you have the, the uh, difficulty of scan quality, of um, uh, how, it's, uh, how your document is made, um, if it's distorted, if it's tilted, if it's, uh, um, you know, askew under, uh, when you get the document, um, so then getting information from that uh, uh, source, we do not, um, uh, how do you say, we do not uh, overlook because it's not a, a, a source we own. So we, mm -hmm. get, we get something which is maybe crappy and um, yeah, then we have to deal with that. So uh, in those kind of situations, um, you could use robots, but it's much, much, much difficult, more difficult to, to get the data you want. It's not uh, like uh, a, a, a Word document and screening, uh, scraping some text uh, in the middle of a document. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we, we, we will use additional software for that. So yeah. we have um, recognition software uh, for IDs or for copies that uh, for mortgages or something. Um, we, we can recognize those documents um, with other software and implement it into a robot. Yeah. So the... The robot itself will interact with a separate program for supplementary processing, and yeah. that program will then provide any additional input the robot may need to do its primary tasks. Yeah, because any, any of the robots we have can also function as an API. So uh, all the robots are smart enough to just um, uh, be able to talk to anything outside of their own comfort zone. <laughs> okay.